I welcome you to Northside Church of the Nazarene. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you will join in, even though we are not together. Let's pray for one another, try to connect to one another, and let's worship our Heavenly Father. So join with Colin in the band uh, from Northside Church of the Nazarene. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. I invite you to go ahead and stand where you're at in your home or with other people. Let's worship together this morning. Amen. I'm casting my cares aside. I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. So much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good, is good. Today is a day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in your name. Today is a day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in your name. And I won't worry about.
sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that come on our god saves our god saves there is hope in your Mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. God, this morning we keep praising how good you are. How good you are to save us, to sacrifice for us. And we want to continue to praise you this morning.
worshiping with us this morning. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me. I'm standing here outside of a closed pool in the uh, development where Peggy and Andrew and Rocket live. Being closed, like everything else, really helps heighten what we're talking about today, the fear of what is going on. And so today, I wanna to talk to you about overcoming the fear factor. Do you remember watching that show? It's probably five years ago. I loved it. It put people in some of the craziest 
most fear-producing situations they could be in. Some people were high up on ledges uh, because of uh, the fear of heights. Some were put in boxes with snakes and some were made to eat nasty things. It was amazing what they did to these people. Some made it, some didn't. But all of them experienced fear. Fear is the normal human response to danger. It is God-given. It helps us. It, it, it creates a bodily response so that we can run away or we can fight. Our heart beats rapidly. Our senses are heightened. It is a God-given response to, uh, to fear. The fear of COVID-19 is real. And throughout this, I want us to really understand that feeling these things, these fear and anxiety possibly, is a normal response to something that is scary. After the fearful situation is done, generally our bodies kind of slowly move back to their normal state. Uh, but we'll have some withdrawal symptoms. Some people get lightheaded, they have the shakes, feel a little nauseated, but we eventually get back. The problem with what's happening right now is we have been in this amped up adrenaline pumping situation with cor coronavirus for at least two months. It is crazy what it's doing to us. And so we are in this sense of being overwhelmed day after day after day, every day. And so the fear never subsides. And as soon as we think that it's calming down, we get another news break, we get another update or a graph or someone shares a story on Facebook that just rips our heart open and now all of a sudden we are afraid once again. To top that all off, I'm talking to people who have lost their jobs as a result of this. It is amazing how much fear comes when we no longer have a job and we're, we're it's, hard time, it's a hard time to be looking for one. What is interesting is that ongoing fear, which is what we are experiencing, can produce anxiety. Now fear is specific to a specific thing. I'm afraid of that snake, that tornado. But anxiety is a more general sense of anxiety or apprehension. It is, it, it is just this overwhelming negative out of control, I'm overwhelmed, nothing is going to go right, that is uh, prompted by something specific, but now it becomes this own deal, it's general, and that is dangerous for us to live in that state. Did you know that Dr. Garabedian told me the other day that right now in this pandemic, uh, doctors are prescribing 36% more anti-anxiety drugs than when, uh, than right after 9-11. This is a real scenario. And this ongoing fear and this beginning of anxiety, and people have different levels of that because some people have disorders and they're taking medicines and so this is putting them over the edge. But, but living with ongoing fear and an anxiety is debilitating and it affects us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Think about some of these things. Think about the physical effects. We're, we're locked in, you'd think we'd be sleeping fine, but many people are saying, I have insomnia, I can't sleep, and I'm tired all the time. Some people have appetite loss and some appetite gain. There's headaches, stiffness, uh, sore backs, all the result of stress, tiredness, and my favorite, digestive upset stomach, issues with the digestive system. It affects us emotionally, irritation, a general sense of sadness, dissatisfaction with things that we really like, but now all of a sudden we're not. Depression, feeling out of control. It affects us mentally. Difficulty focusing, brain fog. We can't make decisions. We find fault with other people constantly in ways that we didn't normally do. And then one of my new favorite words, we begin to catastrophize things. We make everything negative. We just imagine that everything's going to turn out poorly. And so it's what if horrible scenarios one after another. 
it affects us spiritually. A sense of, 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 of spiritual disinterest for many people. I don't feel God. I don't, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading the Bible. I don't feel like worshiping. That is the result of this ongoing uh, being fearful and anxious. Relationally, of course, it affects. I have, I've had a, a person reach out to me on Messenger and said, hey, why don't you do a message about, uh, about marriage and how this is affecting it? Because people are fighting and arguing more than ever before. You can see it in your kids. They're acting up and they're acting out more than ever before. I'm sure you know that domestic violence and abuse uh, is a far greater risk in times of high anxiety and stress. There are some people are saying it's not affecting me at all. They're big and tough. I would suggest to you that it is taking a toll in ways that you may not understand. I want to draw your attention to Proverbs 4.23. Here are three paraphrases of this great verse that we all ought to memorize. All of life flows out of your heart, so guard it constantly. Another one is, the quality of life is determined by your heart, so guard it constantly. Life is lived inside out, so guard your heart. See, we have been fooled to think that the external circumstances dictate how we feel, how we respond to quality of life. And so people are saying, oh, life sucks now because quarantine and I'm locked down and I can't be with my friends. While that may be normal, the Bible reminds us that we can have joy and peace and a sense of confidence even when tough situations are happening. I love to turn to the Psalms because they give us all the range of emotions. Whether it's King David or one of the other authors, they are sometimes angry and they're sometimes happy and they're sometimes frustrated and fearful. And in Psalm 56, David, who is a mighty warrior, is being chased by an army and he is afraid and he is struggling with fear versus faith. Listen to these verses. Be merciful to me, O God, for men hotly pursue me. All day long they press their attack. My slanderers pursue me all day long. Many are attacking me in their pride. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? All day long they twist my words. They're always plotting to harm me. They conspire, they lurk, they watch my steps, eager to take my life. On no account, God, let them escape your anger. Oh God, bring down the nations. Record my lament. List my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this I will know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise. In the Lord, whose word I praise. In God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? I'm under vows to you, O God. I will present my thank offerings to you. For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of my life. David is a mighty warrior. He had killed many, many people. He had led all kinds of armies and he'd been successful. And yet he admits here, he is afraid. Fear is normal. And yet he chooses to trust God in the midst of fear. Trusting God is not normal. It doesn't just automatically happen. We have to make a choice. And David said, I will make that choice. Something else that I see in here is that the trusting God isn't, uh, it isn't automatic for sure, you've got to choose, but it isn't once and for all. It would be nice if you could say, okay, God, I'm not going to be afraid, I trust you, and then for all the rest of our life, we're not afraid. That isn't how it works. We have to keep choosing to trust because fear keeps popping up. 
new things come, or in this case, another thing, another round, another uh, story that, that just reinforces the fear. And so we have to keep choosing to trust God. What's interesting in this psalm is that David goes back and forth from faith to fear. And at times he seems to have fear and faith all at the same time. And that reminds me of myself because I have the ability to have faith and fear at the same time. And so did David. Listen, in verses one through three, he's expressing fear. At the end of verse three and four, he says, I've got faith. He, he just kind of rises up and he has this great faith. But then in verse five through nine, he's back to having fear again. And finally, in verse 10 through 13, faith gains its final triumph. Fear and faith. It is an ongoing wrestling match. Notice some of the things that David does to overcome fear. He says in three different verses that he celebrates God's word. In God, whose word I praise, I will trust. The greatest thing that you and I can do in any fearful situation, including this one, is to discover what does God say about it? What does God say about this? We need to get in the word and allow the promises of God and the presence of God through his word saturate in our hearts and our minds to calm the fear, to give us trust, to enable us to move through this difficult situation. Celebrate God's word, get into it. Next, he, he cries out to God. In verse nine, he says, I cry out to God and my enemies are turned back. He knows God's listening. I hope you know that. Do you know God is listening? Jesus said this, that even a single sparrow doesn't fall dead without God knowing about it. He cares for the smallest and he cares for you. Please know that. Cry out to God. Pray, pray, pray. When you're afraid, run to God. When you don't know what to pray, he'll help you pray, but get in God's presence. The third thing he says is interesting. He says that he has a covenant with God. He says, I'm under vows, the vows of a covenant. And he said, I will present my thank offering to you. Now, a covenant always has two parts. And in this case, with us and God, there's God's part and our part. God always does his part. We sometimes do ours. And so the question is, are we doing our part? David said, I will do my part. And he goes on to say, I'm going to present a thank offering, just a way of expressing my praise to God that he has been with me. Now, like any good preacher, I can't let that kind of a verse go by without encouraging you, especially in these times of, of financial difficulty for all churches, to go to northsidenaz.com click on the secure give, the giving button, and it'll come down and there's several ways that you can give. Or you can send a check. We're still getting the mail and the mail is still running. Or you can bring it by the church and, and put it in the slot. Or here's a new way that you can get your tithe or your offering to the church. We have a new mobile usher. Shirley Yates has volunteered that she will come to your house and with safe distancing, you can put it out and she'll pick it up and she'll take it to the church and put it in the uh, mailbox for you. Now our Northsiders will know Shirley Lake Yates for sure, and I'm not gonna give out her, uh, her contact information, but you can go to my Facebook page and you can give me a message and we'll get you connected if you need that. Giving is a part of our worship and our part of keeping our covenant. Life is lived inside out, so guard your heart. In this time of craziness, guard your heart. Now, before we close in prayer, let me give you some practical things. King David didn't mention these. Now, I imagine he practiced them, but he didn't mention them. I wanna give thanks to Dr. Greg Garabedian and uh, his wise counsel and helping me with this, but also referring me to a great article by the Mayo Clinic.
Here's some ways, practical things, that you can help deal with the fear, the stress and anxiety of this time. You've heard these all before. Let me go over them again. Get enough sleep. Exercise. You need to get up off the couch. Exercise. Eat healthy. All of that sugar and junk food is not going to help you feel better and deal with the stress, the adrenaline that this fear is producing. So eat healthy. Avoid tobacco, alcohol, and drugs. It's not going to help you with that. Limit your screen time. Dr. G says one hour a day, and he and Linda are closely adhering to that. Don't just take in one thing after another. It'll bog you down. Relax, recharge. Take care of your mind. Keep your routine regular. Maintaining a regular schedule is important. Limit, once again, your exposure to the media. It will play with your mind. Stay busy. Stay busy. Enjoy some hobbies. Take on some projects that you've been wanting to do. Set some priorities in that, but be realistic. Be realistic. These are tough times. You may not get done as much as you thought. Take care of your relationships at home. Understand, everyone's under stress. It's irritable, so you're going to have to go out of your way to make time to talk, make time to take that walk, make time to connect, make time to understand what the other person is feeling. So take care of your relationships at home and make connections to others. I know we have to be uh, isolated. Um, we, we have to social distance, but we don't have to just be all by ourselves. You know, we have some young adults that because of moving here to work, they're all by themselves and they can't connect with people uh, physically, but they're doing a good job of Zoom meetings and FaceTiming and interacting on social media. Find ways to connect with other people. Support a family member or a friend that is needy, is hurting, in this time. Find a way. Just while I was preparing this, Peggy and Andrew's next door neighbor, a young adult lady, came over with her two little girls, stood far enough away and just said, hey, I, I brought you a homemade uh, loaf of bread. Unbelievable gesture. There are things that you can do. Here's one other. All of us are experiencing some kind of response to the stress and it's not comfortable, we don't like it, but it's normal. Some people are experiencing abnormal. And if you or someone else that you love is experiencing abnormal kind of anxiety, they're, they're spiraling out of control, I'd encourage you to call and get help. Remember, life is lived inside out. Take care of inside and God will help you get through this time. I want to encourage you to reach out to some other people, uh, even in this, and say, hey, let's talk about the message. How does that affect us? What is happening in our lives? Make it a conversation piece. Let's use this practical information to help us in this time. Would you bow your heads and join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, I want to pray, first of all, for our own fear and anxiety because we are all feeling it in one way or the other. We don't feel it the same, but we sense it. It is causing stress in our lives and in our bodies and in our minds and in our relationships and in our relationship with you. And so I pray that you would help us to guard our hearts. I pray that you would help us to get in the word and to be prayerful and connect with other ones and God, I pray that you would give us strength to go through this. I pray for those who are experiencing abnormal anxiety, people who are seemingly out of control. God, I don't know who they are, but I pray for them that you would give your healing touch, that you would help them to get help, that I pray that your promises would come true in their lives. I pray, Jesus, for those people who have the disease, who are very fearful, and their families, would you touch them? For families who are grieving because of the loss of someone in this time, would you help them, I pray? 
I pray for our medical professionals. Oh God, as they are putting their lives on the line every day, I pray that you would protect them and watch over them and help them as they deal with the anxiety of going into these situations. In a similar way, I pray for our first responders. Lord, they never know what they're gonna face. Would you watch over them and would you protect them and would you keep them safe, I pray. Now, God, I pray for our leaders. They're wrestling and struggling with how to lead our country. I pray that you'd put an end to the back and forth and the, the arguing between the two parties and just help them to do what is best for our people to get us through. Be with not just our national leaders, but our state leaders and our city leaders, God, in every level. And I pray for the leaders of our own church our Church of the Nazarene, our general superintendents. I pray for Carla, whose dad is sick and she can't visit him. I pray for our district superintendent, Lord, as he oversees our West Texas district. And I pray for our North Side leadership. Help us. Help us to be wise as we begin to work through reopening and all that that means. Be with our people. Keep us together as we're apart. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you.